How's it going, everybody? I am Donut. I'm here with Thump. There I is. <laughs> Thalmite. Uh, <laughs> this is, as always, a Black Lives Matter. All the Cosmic Masters and Trains right supporting channel. If you're not supporting that shit, get the fuck off this channel. This is Hawkeye uh, Season 1, Episode 3, Echoes. Which I assume will be about our, you know, the deaf girl who, you yeah. know, has all yeah. the, you know, listening to the vibrations and all mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that makes sense. All right. Uh, yeah, we, we don't like to do pre-discussions. Let's just jump right into it. As always, get the description, get the full length in the description <laughs> below. Check it out. Let's go. Okay, we are here for the discussion of this episode. First yeah. off, hell yeah, Hawkeye, so fucking cool. Seriously, like, yeah. I'm glad, you know, of course they they were going to do it for the show, <laughs> but like, and, and it's it's not hard to make Hawkeye look cool, but mm. I'm just glad we're finally getting Hawkeye being cool. Yeah, and I mean, again, exactly what, you know, they needed to do. I appreciate that it is a transition from the Hawkeye we knew up to this point to yeah. a more like, you know, he's a little looser, he's doing some more cool stuff, like clearly he's upgraded his arrows, mm -hmm. like he's always had trick arrows, but yeah, never quite this like, no. flam like flamboyant is the word I use for Oh, it. yeah. Where it's just like, they're very flashy. They're very like, damn. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, all the purple and everything where it's like, mm -hmm. he hasn't really been any, there's never really been anything purple about Hawkeye up to this point, right? I don't think so. I, I think he wears like dark purple like in his hero outfits. Okay, yeah, maybe. But yeah, like, you know, not like a bright purple. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Hawkeye's never worn like a bright purple, to be fair. True, yeah. But either way, um, do you think by the end of this season we will have Hawkeye in the original comic outfit? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, like, I imagine if we get him in anything, it'll be like the Matt Fraction outfit. Yeah, like, I think this, like, that was our, you know, poke at the comics. Yeah. Or, you know, at the original design. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I feel like he'll end up in the Matt Fraction design. Oh, yeah, which I'm totally happy with, because, like, mm -hmm. I love super comic designs, but Hawkeye's design is the one that's just like, this is... <laughs> Hawkeye is the most, like... Almost like a DC kind of character, or like mm. as if it's like from another like guest starring. Or I can whatever. see that. Like the the costume, especially the mask, is ridiculous. A giant H on oh, his yeah. fucking forehead. <laughs> the, uh, the the fucking um, flying motorcycle oh, yeah. jet ski thing. <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's funny, but it's also just like I cannot take mm. this man seriously. Like it'd be very hard to get from phase three to there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the cartoon. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, like, the version of Hawkeye. But, you know. Yeah. But it's, they're still trying to be more, a little bit serious with them and, mm -hmm. you know, have him be a cool character. But he's, he's not. I can't take him seriously when he looks <laughs> like that. Uh, so, so, yeah. I, I'm totally happy with, like, the, oh, it'd be funny if we could, you know, have mm -hmm. him wear this. But it's not going to actually be. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I'm just, that, man, the giant fucking arrow. Also, this tracksuit oh, yeah. mafia, I, once again, I gotta commend the goons and Marvel mm -hmm. <laughs> for really sticking it out. Oh, yeah. Like, he got the shit beaten out of him, he got arrows shot mm -hmm. at him, he got the gunkler for his car and all oh, that. Yeah. And then he had the giant arrow come down, blow up his car oh. while he was in it. <laughs> Like, they're, they're stupid, but they are ride or die. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't think we're going to get them on our side now. No. <laughs> like, but at the same time, where do you think we're going to end with, you know, the the girl? Uh, Maya? Yeah, Maya. Hmm. I'm, like, she is such a parallel to Kate that, mm -hmm. like, you know, she likes Ronan and Kate, or sorry, she hates Ronan and Kate loves Hawkeye. I oh, really messed that one up. Yeah. We've got the, you know, both of them have dead fathers with, like, a mysterious thing going on there. Mm -hmm. They've got their, like, Maya's got her uncle who is very clearly, like, being set up as a mystery. Yeah. It doesn't seem like, you know, just from the hand, it doesn't seem like anyone in the series so far. No. I mean, that was a big guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's not, like, a just, you know, like, that's a striking character design, even oh, for I... just a hand. Mm-hmm. 
Like, that's why I was like, I would think it's Swordsman, but like, even if I, you know, ignored, like, the voice thing, yeah. uh, it, it cannot be Swordsman. It was way too big. I want to go back and look yeah. at it, actually. It's also, I think it was, like, a big white hand. Kingpin? Maybe Kingpin. <laughs> We were talking about the Daredevil stuff. Like, mm. you know, the Daredevil shot and everything that. And, I mean, it, you know, it comes to mind with the Foggy's Gym uh, sort of situation. You know, the very first Daredevil issue. It was, like, way right it starts. Yeah. No. It's, uh, well, wait. Did you mean white hand isn't, like... Yeah, like a white guy. Oh, yeah. oh. I thought you meant, like, a white suit, which is why I said uh, oh. a Kingpin. No, but this is a black suit. Yeah. And also, his hand doesn't look as big as Kingpin. Like, it's a big hand. It's a big hand. But... You gotta look at those cufflinks. Hmm. Oh, is that the Kingpin the cufflinks? cufflinks? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but if it is Kingpin, he's wearing a black suit now, which is definitely yeah. not his, like, you know, style. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mainly said White just as a, like, not a, like, but, native yeah. guy. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, I see what you're saying now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Like, hmm. That's, so... But who are, do you have a guess as to who it could be? Zero guess. Honestly, Kingpin's as good a choice as any. Tombstone, maybe? Oh. Tombstone, maybe. But, like, as an uncle, like, even as, you know, like, a scary guy is, like, the head of this organization, I, yeah. I, could, I could see it. Because, like, yeah, uncle, where did they say uncle? Uncle okay, yeah, un- left cross. Yeah. yeah. Which, that's also not a, like... Yeah, so I, yeah, that assumingly is Uncle. I kind of yeah. didn't connect that he meant, you know, that guy. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and you know, it, uh, probably not actual Uncle, mm-hmm. or colloquially Uncle. Yeah, like, close enough that he would literally, like, drive her home after class. Yeah. Like, also not a, like, just a mob boss Uncle, like, a, you know, a sign of respect for someone I'm scared of. Mm-hmm. It is a, like, no, I do trust you to drive my kid home. <laughs> Also, I would not expect Tombstone to just be a white guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, you know, um, who's the who's the Magia guy? The Hammerhead? Uh, yeah, Hammerhead, maybe. Maybe. The guy seems too tall for Hammerhead. Yeah. But that's, that's a possibility. Hammerhead, we're doing the Mafia. Mm-hmm. You know. Could be that. Um, any, any other ideas? A lot of who I'm saying is Spider-Man people. Mm-hmm. But, um... That's most yeah. of what I know, I guess. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know any Hawkeye villains. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. Hawkeye does not have much of a singular rogues gallery. You know? Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm not even looking for Hawkeye villains. I'm just mm-hmm. kind of looking for, like, criminal, yeah, you know. Crime guys. Yeah, crime boss guys. Oh, is this Egghead? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> we got the, we got the mm-hmm. Ant-Man. We got the pen particles. Oh. It's Egghead. Do it. Wait, no, we had Egghead in uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Oh, did we? Yeah. He was. He just had oh, a yeah. shaved head. Yeah, he was just some guy. He did not have an egg head. Yeah, I, oh, man. Fucking MCU. <laughs> <laughs> Give our egg head. Okay. Uh, but uh, how but, do you feel about Maya in general? Uh, by the way? Really quick. Mm-hmm. Some last guesses. Master planner, you know, it could be something like that, even. Oh, like one of the other random guys. Like yeah, that. like you know, they could go for like some like yeah. you know, considering you know Hawkeye as a character in the comics is a goofy kind of character, mm-hmm. they could go for a kind of you know we're going to MCU this stupid character. Yeah, sort of thing. Again, that would fit with the tracksuit mafia. Did I say master planner? Yeah, it was I, of course Doctor Octopus. Yes, no. I, was it Master... The, the Mad Thinker. The Mad what, Thinker. That's what I was mm-hmm. thinking of. The There's so thinker. many guys like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that's just my guess. Then. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you said white hand, I immediately thought it was white suit and I went kingpin. But because of the black suit, there is the cufflinks. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems like the whole Foggy's Gym sort of yeah. thing from the first issue of Daredevil. Uh, mm-hmm. But the black suit, I'm, I'm going to... if I'm, I'm going to... I don't think it's Tombstone. I don't think it's Doomstone. I- I'm gonna say Hammerhead. I'm gonna guess okay. this is Hammerhead. Okay. Yeah, I'm. 
it's not quite right. But also, to be fair, this is the problem I have with every adaptation of Kingpin, is that even once I see them in my head, I always picture him bigger, like, you know, because he's imposing. Yeah. And so I genuinely could not tell you what the uh, Netflix the, the Kingpin's hand looked like. I imagined it being yeah. gigantic, especially since, since, like, you know, she's a tiny little kid here. Mm-hmm. But, I, like, I picture his hands being, like, the size of Daredevil's head. Yeah, because, like, he does, like, grab on both sides. Yeah. Whereas this guy couldn't do that with a kid. And it's not a very fat hand. No. It's a large guy, but it doesn't seem like he's, like, there's not a lot of, like, fat to muscle ratio in the hand, if yeah. that makes sense. Like, maybe the actor, you know, slimmed down or something mm-hmm. like that. But, like, yeah, it's just not, and it's also, I would say, it's not white enough. It's not mm-hmm. pasty enough. <laughs> Also, this is in 2007. 2007. Uh, isn't Kingpin relatively pretty young, comparatively? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, he would be kind of youngish here, if this, mm-hmm. if it would be him. Yeah. I, like, do, I don't think it could... Uh, I'm gonna... I'm, I think Hammerhead. Okay. I think we're doing... Because because the Mafia, the Tracksuit Mafia... Mm-hmm. Like, and the Maji Goons are in, like, you know... I mean, they're, they're more in, I think, like pinstripe suits like yeah. really old school style oh yeah but if you want to update it so. yeah um I, I don't remember did the video game have them be in track suits or were they also in, in suit suits <gasps> I, I think, don't remember I think they were in like suit suits okay. but yeah um what do you think was going like do you think this was just like yeah this is a place to do like karate tor- well it was it just like oh this is your uncle this is, was the karate thing mm-hmm. a criminal thing I don't think so. Yeah, I think that was just normal, but then the boxing place is, yeah. like, the, you know, the they were staging, or, like, they were uh, doing illegal betting and, and all that stuff. I think so. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Because, yeah, this definitely feels to me like a, you know, like, even uncle aside, she was born into a crime family, mm-hmm. and so there is that, you know, like, she wouldn't be involved into the crime stuff as, like, you know, six-year-olds, but it, it feels like a real, like, you know... We're putting you into karate, partially because, you know, you're going to get into some dicey stuff in the future. Mm-hmm. And the father probably got into worse stuff because they couldn't afford the deaf school, mm-hmm. and so he felt bad and wanted to get more money. Yeah. I can definitely see that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm also glad we're having this, because we've had, like, a lot, you know, it's been a lot of, like, oh, is, are we supposed to think that Ronan is, like, bad that he was killing those people? But, mm-hmm. like, as far as we know, they were all awful, you know, people. But, mm-hmm. like, so now we got our first, like, okay, yeah, not necessarily. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. don't know. Yeah. But, you know, we're, we're definitely, you know, seeing that it, it wasn't just, like, he was going after the worst of the worst, you know? Mm-hmm. It seems like he was just going after organized crime in general. Yeah. Which makes sense as to, you know, his emotional state at that time. And oh, yeah. That, the whole, why didn't you get snapped? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, to- totally get that, but I'm glad we're getting that, like, mm-hmm. uh, just, just seeing that perspective of it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that she just coincidentally showed up as this was happening is so wild. That's <laughs> a real comic situation. Ah, uh, yeah. <sighs> also, the KB Toys location was so <laughs> fucking, like... Uh, that's like the blockbuster thing from Miss Marvel, but more like, like, I, I, how many people out there know KB Toys? I don't like, know KB Toys. Is. Yeah, like it's like it's it's like below like Toys R Us kind of. Okay. It's like you know, uh, it went out of you know, um, Toys R Us is mostly gone out of business too. Mm-hmm. But like KB Toys is definitely the the first one. Ah. Like it is the kind of you know. The fact that they have the going out of business sale last day side is like, mm-hmm. when I was a kid growing up, KB Toys was going out of business. Mm. <laughs> it was just one of those places of like, this is Toys R Us where you can get everything cheap because they're always going out of business. Yeah. <laughs> I believe they also sometimes had like, yeah, like the ball pit and like, uh, not like rides, but like. Sort of like, you know, McDonald's play area sort of okay. thing. So it was like a Toys R Us plus that sort of thing. Okay, cool. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely like that. Like, it's not as, like, well-known as Blockbuster. Like, this is mm-hmm. this is a perfect reference. I love it. <laughs> like, for my generation especially. Yeah. Like, you know, in America, but also, like, 
it's so like I wonder I've never heard anybody who grew up with KB Toys being around. <laughs> like <laughs> was KB Toys ever not going out of business? Ah. I don't know. <laughs> I see on the tracksuit mafia's truck. I mean, in the very next I said, you know, they're trust a bro. I didn't notice their tagline was "Smile, you're moving." <laughs> <laughs> I would not trust these guys. I would not trust a bro. Oh my god, trust a bro is such a funny name for a moving company. <laughs> but uh, uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, uh, my, I, I'm really, really into her character. Um. Like, yeah, like, she is definitely still, like, you know, I was expecting her to, um, become an ally, like, at the end of this episode, and we were gonna get them on our side once we kind mm -hmm. of, like, explain the situation a bit, uh, but now, you know, the Ronin situation side of it, like, yeah. you know, makes sense why they were going after Ronin like that, mm -hmm. but I kind of thought it was just because of what Kate did, you know? Right. Like, oh, she beat up some of our guys and stuff, mm -hmm. but, like, no, it makes more sense that they're so fucking, you know trying to, to find this because of the Ronin situation. Yeah. Uh, so, like, that that makes a lot more sense. And, yeah, I don't think we're getting these guys on our side, even though they are <laughs> hilarious. Right. Uh, <sighs> but, yeah, I, um, I, like, mm -hmm. I don't know where she's going to end up at the end of this season. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. if we are going to be able to, like, get her on our side, essentially, mm -hmm. or if, you know, she will tragically die in some way. Or mm. if, like, she'll die at the hands of the bigger boss or something. Like, wh we have so many villains in this. What villain is going to die because yeah. of another villain? Like, that's got to happen. Mm -hmm. But which one's it going to be? Is yeah. Jack going to die because of the mom? Is, you know, Maya going to die because of this bigger boss? Is, mm -hmm. the, you know, Swordsman going to die because of this bigger boss? So much that could happen. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so I'm very into this, like, you know, s like much more antagonistic than I thought it was going to be role and, like, crushing Hawkeye's hearing aid. I thought that was going to be a thing for the rest of the series, uh, but, yeah. uh, like, something he was going to have to deal with for the rest of the series. I think it is. You think he's, he's going to get broke again, or do you think he's going to make the personal choice to just, like... I think it's the personal choice. Like, it's because, you know, she alley-oops it by saying... I mean, you know, she says beforehand, mm -hmm. you need to stop, you know, trusting this. Yeah. It feels like... How do I put it? Like, this was the test run... Fair, but that's not him being forced. It, like, you know, I thought it was going to be like a, a trial under fire sort of okay, situation. But I if he's it, making yeah. the choice himself, I think that's, a, you know, still a fine thing to do. But mm -hmm. I, I thought it was going to be like a, not as even like a, I'm, I'm upset. I was just saying that was what I thought we were right. going to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I'm assuming it's going to be like a choice-based thing. Yeah. But yeah, I, I thought it was going to be more like a trial under fire sort of situation. Kind of like what Kate is going through, but mm -hmm. with senses. Uh, and yeah, the whole like little dragon thing. The mm -hmm. Dragons, you know, exist in another world, but if they could <sighs> exist in our world too, they would be stronger. You have to exist in both both worlds, you know. It's such a good metaphor. Yeah, like I like I can't imagine how blind people like if you don't have somebody that can get food for you and mm. do shopping for you and stuff like that, like. A grocery store, you go in and it's just food. Yeah, like there's no there's no braille in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have to go to like a specific store for that, or like order online. Like, yeah, you know, that idea of just like eat, just trying to if you you know were in a circumstance like that where you had a helper, blah blah blah, mm -hmm. but now you you know are in a city by yourself for some reason, something's going wrong, whatever. Yeah, like, uh, it's just crazy to, to, you know, that idea of, like, you are in a world of your own, mm -hmm. you know. Ugh. Yeah. I think it's also just really cool that, you know, in addition to Maya being independent, she also has an interpreter. And mm -hmm. then we, like, parallel that later on with Clint having, uh... Oh, uh, uh, Kate. Yeah, Kate is an interpreter. interpreter. Yeah. Yeah, I also thought that scene was going to be totally different, too. I, mm -hmm. like, because he didn't hear her come in, I thought it was going to be he was talking to his wife about something that then she overhears. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, something just like, oh, I didn't realize he had this side of him, too. Or, right. like, it's... something, something. You know, I didn't realize how much this was, like, hurting him to be away from his family and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, what was the scene we got way more... Oh, yeah. Uh, or, I mean, at first of all, it was going to be a comedic scene of him just getting scared by her or something. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but, 
But uh, also, man, these frozen peas are getting a lot of use. <laughs> oh, yeah. They can't be good at this point. Oh, no. Yeah, her aunt's going to come back and some blood all over these peas. Oh, no. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. Also, so, um, what was the guy's name that was working with Maya? Uh, Kazi. Yeah. Kazi. Yeah, uh, him as well. Again, everybody in the series, very striking designs. Yeah. I can never tell who's going to be a big character and who's mm -hmm. not, because they all look so striking. Yeah. I'm very curious what their relationship is. Like, yeah, it gets brought up in the episode itself. Mm -hmm. But, like, there's no way he joined her group with the Tracksuit Mafia. No, no. Like, no. they definitely knew each other from before then, but, like, oh, how yeah. far back? Mm -hmm. Definitely pretty, pretty far back. Because, like, he was in the group when her father was still running it and stuff right. like that. So, yeah. And, like, do you think the Tracksuit Mafia was a part of it before? Or... I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think they, like absorb the tracksuit mafia at some point okay after they were killed i think so like i i think it's a you know uh, we've been burned down you think you know this organization's dead no we're gonna come back stronger but, yeah but whenever that kind of thing happens you know you need people mm -hmm. and it can never be a like well we're gonna grow really slowly because then you you know that, that doesn't work you're gonna get crushed yeah like you need a bunch of people really fast but they aren't just like an army they're using they are, you know, the crew. They mm -hmm. are, like, they're not, like, they are the tracksuit mafia, but also they are the tracksuit mafia. Yeah. Like, Maya and, and what's his name? Kazi. Kazi. Uh, yeah, they are both a part of the tracksuit mafia mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Like, that's fair. It's it's not that they are still the old group, and yeah. then they're using the tracksuit mafia. They are the, the, the group. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, all the dad would always, you know, put the crew first, mm -hmm. but, like, now she's not because she's so focused on this revenge, mm -hmm. you know. And again, like I love this. Like she is so far gone, consumed by revenge. Like I am a pro revenge person. Mm -hmm. Get your revenge. But the, you know, then there's that other layer of like, now is this for revenge or is this to destroy yourself? Yeah. Like is this? And you know, you're saying it's for revenge, but it's really you're just trying to go as far as you can until you just die or mm -hmm. you know whatever uh and that's what this feels like of like the okay so the ronin's dead and the person who killed the ronin is dead mm -hmm. so what am i supposed to do i'm just gonna kill you anyway yeah like just this like there's no you know so yeah. this wasn't about the true revenge mm -hmm. you're just trying to find an outlet for your anger at this yeah, point it is literally being consumed by revenge mm -hmm. and yeah like I, I i'm i'm very into a character like that yeah the one scene that sold me on the, the uh, like, her relationship with Kazi is, you know, just the fact that he, like, ripped her off. Like, you know, like, she he yeah. physically manhandled her and they had that whole fight in the background. Mm -hmm. To me, that's such a, like, you know, that can't be a subordinate thing. No. It is a, like, I trust you so much that, y you know, you feel completely safe grabbing me, someone who could definitely kill you, and, like, throwing, you know, like, not, you know, like, ripping me off, yelling at me, you know, mm -hmm. screaming with your signs. It is such a, like, you know, I trust you enough that I am going to listen to you, even if I'm so mad that I could kill someone right now. I mean, it's that similar situation with the Flag Smashers of, uh, I can't remember their names either. Uh, I remember Carly in that sense. Yeah, Carly and uh, the guy who was killed by uh, John Walker. Um, yeah, like those two, you know, had a very similar relationship yeah. as well. Of like the, you know, the girl's the one who is in charge. Like she is the head, she is the boss. Mm -hmm. But then that guy is like very clearly, because they have a personal connection, even if on the books, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Nothing here is on books, we know. He's probably, the idea is he's on the same level as the rest of them. Uh -huh. But realistically, no, he's not because of their personal, like, relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I imagine they've probably known each other since they were, like, maybe even in the karate class or something. Mm -hmm. I could see it. Like, I feel like it's probably pretty far back. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, but I also think it was probably like a him being in the the organization and her not being in the organization mm. sort of thing. I could see that. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely was being groomed by the uncle. Where is the uncle? Why are they like... Yeah. Well, I guess the uncle is still part of this. Yeah, like... Yeah, like they definitely implied he is the, the, the bo big boss. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I really love the way that... Uh, Kazi uh, is is dressed like the 
it reminds me of Savage Garden from Part Six of JoJo. Uh, he reminds me so much of like Jack Harlow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that too. Oh yeah. Uh, well, Savage Garden was actually the bird, not the. But I meant the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got as well like a tattoo on his on his neck. Mm. Uh, did Maya also have that? No, uh, no. Uh, did her dad have that? I don't think so. Uh, no, no. He did have a tattoo on his neck, but it was not yeah. the, the uh, like bird tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Uh, what else to say? Uh, I am very interested in Kazi. Like, I'm curious what role he's going to take since he does seem to be very moral and like, you know. Like, he's doing this for her, you know, but I don't think he's going to let her go as far as she wants to go. Mm-hmm. Like, he's going to stop it, even though he's pretending to be like, oh, you're the boss. Yeah. I am just really happy that the direction we seem to be going towards is, like, you know, even on the villain side, very small scale, very yeah. familial, very, like, personal. Because, like, it, it would have been fine if this was a big, like, city-wide problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> big old gotta stop the gas from turning everyone to slithers. I mean, it, it might get it to might, that point. It we don't, might, so yeah, we don't know what the watch is. <laughs> but I, my personal hope is that it's not that. Just because, yeah. like, you know, the, the MCU has so few small-scale stories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that would just be extremely cool. Yeah. Yeah, I ugh, fully, fully agree. Would love this to just be small-scale. Mm -hmm. I did love all the back and forth we were having when he had the hearing aid crushed. Yeah. The fucking driving scene was... Oh, so good. 10 out of 10. And, like, the the cars and the lot shots are definitely very CG, yeah. but I think it fits really well with, like, how heightened the chase is. Like, yeah, and I didn't even notice, so, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's great CG, but I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was real cars. <laughs> mm. There was only... There was a couple, like, when the, you know... Uh, uh, Challenger like crashes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It was like okay, that was very clearly CG, mm -hmm. you know. But like when they were swerving past cars and stuff, like that I didn't even notice. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's all the situation. If it fits the situation, it's good. Yeah. Uh, the the conversation with Nate is heartbreaking. Yeah. I'm so like clearly his whole family is used to him disappearing. Mm -hmm. Or him being AWOL or whatnot. Yeah. And I appreciate that it's not a, like, you're tearing your family apart situation because he's been doing this for so long. It is a... And he know, also hasn't missed everyone. No. Yeah, it, it isn't a, like, hyper, you know, you're a bad dad because of it situation. Yeah. It is a, we're all just used to the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, and it's not like a go home with your family. Like, it's like a, I mean... Uh, you know, this isn't, like, a huge problem, but it shows that he has a heart that he's willing mm -hmm. to just, like, as she says, you know, not be with his family for Christmas to help a random stranger who calls all this. Yeah. Also, it is... It, the, the small character acting is so strong. Mm -hmm. Just the idea of, like, him taking out his hearing aid is the audio version of how he just will not look at people's faces when he's talking to them. Yeah, I didn't think about yeah. that. Like, he's so avoidant. Mm hmm <sighs> And yeah, like, I have not been like, you know, he, he's, he's like an, what am I trying to say? He's an above average actor mm -hmm. to the point where I have never been like, wow, that was really good acting in a scene with him. Mm -hmm. But I've also never been like, you know, that's even, like, mid-acting. Right. Like, he's he's a very reliable actor. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, in this show, I think he's able to also, like, show his chops a little bit more. Oh, and, like, yeah. Do a little bit more. Uh, but, yeah, so then we have, clearly the mom is trying to protect Jack mm -hmm. and the security system. Um, you know, Jack is also here in the house, assumingly when the mom's not here. Mm-hmm. So, hmm, what will... Yeah. I don't know. Like, what, where do you think we're going to go with this? Do you think we're about to just get a fight right now? Like, the fact that this is episode three and it's already coming out. Well, this is like six episodes, right? Yeah, it's only six episodes. Yeah, so next episode's episode four. We're coming mm -hmm. heads already. This was the midpoint. Yeah, we That's are halfway crazy. through. That's always so weird to think about mm -hmm. six episode shows. Yeah. Uh, it really depends on whether they know each other or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like, they left it, they stopped at the perfect moment of, it's ambiguous, I don't know. Mm. Because, what do you, make a guess. I think they know each other. I don't think they do. Okay. Well, I'm really happy we're, we're thinking different things. Yeah. 
That's not even like I'm taking a different stance mm -hmm. to, to make it fun. I don't think he knows him. Okay. Because, yeah, the way I see this resolving next episode is like this. You know, like, uh, Clint de-escalates it via, like, a very clear, like, okay, so you're doing this again. <laughs> Like, not necessarily the marriage scam thing, but just yeah. the general, like, okay, you're in a rich house, I know what you're like, <laughs> you're doing something here, yeah. what's going on? I, I got bigger problems. So, do you think Clint Barton knows Jack? I do. Okay. Because I will say, may, it is a possibility that the Ronin knows the swordsman. Oh. But, you hmm. know, they don't know that's Jack, they don't know that's Clint. Right. That's also just such a cool concept that I can't really think of a lot of other series that have done that, where it's like, I have two secret identities, and no one, the secret one is the second one. Yeah. But there is a first one that everyone would go like, well, yeah, you are a superhero, we all know this. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not a big deal. Yeah. Oh, that's very clever. Mm -hmm. oh, but yeah, so that's my guess. I'm going to say that they don't personally, like, Clint does not know Jack, is what I mean by okay. they don't know each other. Like, they're not going to recognize each other, sure. is what I mean. Yeah, whereas, yeah, what I mean is that they'll recognize each other. Mm -hmm. whereas, but, like, I think it would be harder to be, like, you don't know who the Ronin is. Or, mm -hmm. or like, you know, I don't know how popular the Swordsman is. But I think mm -hmm. he has to know the Ronin, but not, like, that the Ronin is Clint. I yeah, think. I think that makes sense. Yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. But, but also, maybe you're right, because when he came in, he was like, you know, oh, how'd you say Armand died? By sword, mm. I like. I think he's starting to put it together. Yeah, he's starting to go like, hmm, maybe this isn't a coincidence. Maybe it is this old guy now. Yeah, like he doesn't have a reaction to the swords, but he does look at them, like the decorative ones. Yeah. What if his name's not even Jack? Might not be Jack. Like maybe that's why he didn't react to the name Jack and the sword and everything like that. Ooh. But like once he was in here, he was like, oh, that reminds me of this guy he fought before. Mm. And hmm. Do you have any, like, more of a guess or an idea about what's going on with, like, Jack and uh, Kate's mom and, like... I'm... I mean, I don't really have a better guess as to it. I'm just still on the train of, I think Jack is the one who's being tricked. Okay. I think the mom is the more evil one. I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't really have anything particular, like, what she's trying to do with him. Mm -hmm. Unless she's trying to, like get the Ronin or some mm. shit too? Yeah. I don't think she's connected to the organization, like including the Tracks of Mafia and all that. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. Also, do you, does the name Sloan rec uh, ring a bell to you at no. all? No. It rings a bell in that I, I'm certain it's like a comic book company thing, but I, it, oh, okay. it doesn't bring anything specific to mind right now. Yeah, I don't, don't, don't think it brings anything to mind for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's just interesting as a, like, you know, that was on Kaz's file. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Doesn't mean anything to me right now. Yeah, just... Could have another faction. We could keep oh, on adding factions so we're done. <laughs> I think that's it for this I think one. we're done. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys for the next episode. <laughs> Until then, get the fuck out of here. <laughs>